Hello SGD here. I'm working on something else, but I thought I'd make a quick video about this one and we're going to consider Foth or Hermes, the gods of knowledge, science, weights and measures, engineering and these other points. Uh, well, that's where we get Hermeticism from. And so these, there was a very interesting period, late 1400s up until well the late 1700s where some really interesting, mysterious happenings, organizations were going on and they were centered around weights and measures. They were setting the weights and measures that essentially we still use today. And so uh, looking into the speed of light, I've got a lot of stuff to come about, especially in regards to ancient units and measure of the pyramid. But um, Oli Roma, uh, very important, because, well, he, he basically gets the credit for the first person to get the speed of light accurately. There were a few others who were investigating at Galileo and some others. But uh, 1644 to 1710, this very interesting, chunky period of, of history where these characters were going around. Now, this is a coin to 2013. This is to commemorate um, Oli Roma and the speed, I guess that would be sp light speed, I'm, I'm assuming, in Danish. Uh, he was a, a uh, astronomer royal in Denmark, or at least a, the official astronomer. And what we have here is this picture of how he calculated the speed of light. So at that time, all he had was a, a telescope and a pendulum clock. Now, here I have a one meter pendulum. That's one second, one Egyptian royal cubit, no more than 30 degrees. But that's the technology he had a telescope and a pendulum clock. Quartz crystals and atomic clocks were centuries away. This was how timekeeping was done. And astronomers was so invested in um, setting official standards of time and official standards of length, especially this uh, person right here. But how did he get the speed of light? So, uh, um, firstly, he he noticed Io, the eclipse. So when Io went behind Jupiter, and then he 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 measured that. He used a pendulum to measure that, and then he waited uh, six months later till the Earth was on the other side, and with that was able to create an angle. So that's what this. And also time, he was, with a pendulum he was able to measure time, and that's how, do you, yeah, one metre, one second, one cubit. Um, so that's how, he, so that's the sun, that's the two positions, you know, or the positions of the earth, and then we have Io going behind Jupiter using this eclipse and the delay in that he was able to get a very, very close approximate of the speed of light. But, but, he was also very important in, for instance, um, 1683, King Christian V introduced an office to oversee weights and measures, first led by Ali Roma. Now he brought in this interesting units of measure, and especially um, the Danish units of measure, and or Northern European measures such as the Saxon foot, are, are just spot on to ancient units. It's uh, from the Mediterranean, especially. Um, and so, well, they picked up this trade, early Bronze Age, um, late Bronze Age, early Iron Age. There's lots of evidence to show this trade, but it actually extends back. But, uh, so some early standards can be recovered from measure drawings made of the 52 and a half foot, uh, foot long Hjotspring's boat, uh, but also the late Bronze Age and the 82 foot Nidum ship. Now, that 82 foot straight away, 27.3. But uh, that's a reconstruction of the boat. And then there's this interesting thing. Uh, so uh, this is another article. And um, someone else has been looking at Danish, Norwegian, and notice, for instance, 20 inch inches are very close to 52.3 centimetres. 52.3 centimetres, one Egyptian royal cubit. Now, 20 inches is 12 inches plus 8. That's a 2 to 3 ratio to begin with. Now, there's all other stuff, including uh, the p uh, pi. Now, there's all... Okay, but... The older foot of 31.402 centimetres by Ole Roma. That's 3.14. So, that's uh, pi times 10. And, well, again, within a fraction of a millimeter that's one millimeter from 1.2 millimeter or one millimeter from from exactly pi one millimeter and there's some interest now it's well because there's the, also these stone ships and I, a long time ago i did some videos on these like ancient sites across the world 
uh, just link up with these units. And so, firstly, it's 220 feet long. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, that's uh, pi times 10, once again, in the Cremona scale, 220 feet is 200 Indus or Sumerian feet, which gives you all these other lovely numbers going from it. 220 is the half base of the pyramid, but at 18.8, um, so 18.84, uh, now, do you measure the stones from the middle, from the outside or the inside? This is a issue. What usually happens is if you do all three, you actually still bring out something interesting, but Let's just go, okay, so that's 36 Egyptian royal cubits cross, so that 52.3 um, centimetres and half a mill point six of a millimetre, Egyptian royal cubit equals a metre equals a second, and there you have another ancient unit defining these ships. So one of the speculations was, did they use this as some sort of template for the uh, sacred proportions of ship building back in the time? But... Uh, Bronze Age, we have beads from Egypt to be found in in uh, that part of the world. But back to uh, Ole Roma and the speed of light and how he got these things. So it's using the earth and waiting for half a year to be on the other side to get the best uh, measurement. But the eclipse of Io behind Jupiter. And that's what's interesting. So... Now we go to, well, he used the pendulum uh, time device to measure measure this. And so, for instance, uh, Jefferson and um, Washington were going to introduce a, a, a different type of, call it the US foot. So one yard would be 99.4 um, centimetres, but that's based on a one second pendulum at standard gravity or 45 degrees north. This was going to be the was the meter, the meter the, and the second are connected. Um, in Greenwich is where the sort of modern meter is exactly 86,400 seconds per day, which just happens to be the angle of the pyramid as well. But um, back to 1640, at the same time that uh, Ole Roma was working, so Meron Mersan was the first uh, to publish on a second pendulum, and he defined it as 0 0.994. That's the was going to be the standard for France and for England of one second, um, but that's at standard gravity. Again, that's at 45 degrees north. Uh, as you move north or south, it changes. But now it comes to Giovanni Riccioli. He was also very influential, a clergyman, scientist, mathematician, astronomer. This is one of, uh, frontispiece of one of uh, his works. And what's interesting is, for instance, well, this guy, you know, he see Copernicus on the floor. In this model, the Earth is at the center, and then the planets and the stars revolve around it, but that was dismissed, well, because it doesn't work. And uh, they were using Copernican epi epicycles. They were using all sorts of tricks to try and get it to work, but of course it doesn't work. And so now we see the heliocentric model, which everything worked. They can predict movements, and also the movement of the moon around the Earth. So they'd worked out this by that time, Notice even the light going down the telescope. But what's interesting is this guy, and he's covered with little eyeballs. What that is, that's Argus. And that's um, an interesting point because... So Riccioli did a lot of work on working out the pendulum. It was his work that said, you know, no more than 30 degrees. At, uh, okay, um, if the amplitude, is, the amplitude of its swing is increased to 40 degrees, um, the period increases. So he, you know... To create one second, you have to have a shallow angle. 40 degrees is too much. And he you know, was able to do this, again, with some really simple technology um, and a, good, a lot of know-how. But what the point is, is... So, Riccioli's uh, frontispiece and the guy covered with all the eyeballs. This is Athenaeus Kirscher, another Jesuit. And they're just... They're writing in... They're, especially back then, we didn't have... Um, to alchemists, they didn't have chemical notation like we did now. They wrote in colourful, different language. Even back then, plus, minus, divide were not... They're like universal symbols now, but that didn't exist at that time. Um, things weren't standardised. So they wrote in a different form of language, but also passing on knowledge. But this guy has uh, covered in the eyeballs, and what do we have? Again, this standard issue of the peacock. Now, that's the point of this, because... The peacock and the guy covered with with the eyeballs. Now that's going to go back to Ole Roma and the speed of light. So 
the Sun, the Earth travelling around, the eclipse of Io behind Jupiter. Both these guys invested in weights and measures, in, in especially pendulum, trying to measure, get perfect time. And then we have this character here, which is Argus, covered in eyeballs. Now, he's uh, it's part of Greek mythology, connected to Jupiter and Io. So, firstly, uh, again, the 1500s, 1600s, then the 1700s, the constellations of the Southern Hemisphere were being uh, mapped out and named. So, we have Fornax, and, which was a, the alchemist's oven, horologium, the pendulum clock, the square of Norma, Circinus, the compass, triangulum astrale, the octans, these are all measuring systems, telescopium. So the southern, the southern constellations are embedded with this, especially measure systems, but there's also a nice connection here because we have Ara, the altar, and Parvo, the peacock. That's why I was pointed out the peacock and that guy covered in eyeballs because it's got to do with Jupiter and Io as well. So in classical mythology, the Olympians, Jupiter, Zeus, overthrew the Titans, led by his father, Saturn, otherwise known as Kronos. Titan, the planet, uh, moon of Saturn, is a night, you know, this link there, but also have Io and Europa, some of the moons of Jupiter. Now that joins up to the war of the Titans versus the Olympians, because Ara, the altar, is is where the Olympians swore an oath of loyalty in their war against the Titans. The Titans were led by Zeus or Jupiter and his wife was Hera or Juno, as in the month of June. And what does that join up with the... Well, Hera is connected with the peacock. And, the, of course, Parvo, the peacock there. Now, in the legend, Jupiter fell in love with Io, the moon Jupiter fell in love with Io, and to protect her from Hera's wrath, Zeus turned her into a beautiful white heifer. Uh, Hera was pretty you know, angry at some times, and she, so she took, it, took the Io away, tied her to an olive tree, and was guarded by Argus. Argus was covered with a hundred little eyeballs. He never went to sleep. There was always a couple of eyes open. So to rescue Io, Jupiter sent Hermes, he lulled Argus into sleep with music. And there in this, uh, okay, Argus and Hermes, there we see a classical picture, again, see that guy covered with the eyeballs, that's Argus, and that's connected to the white heifer and to Jupiter. And uh, there you see this picture where you know Argus has been decapitated by Hermes. Hermes killed Argus. Argus had 100 eyes, 100 eyes. Only two slept at one time, but with music he was able to overcome him. And then Hera with her peacocks. See these old sim. These have got there's the info in these old pictures. They're, they're, they're very clever the way they did it. Hera placed the hundred eyes of the now dead Argus onto the peacock. So that's why the peacock has, well, at least as the legend goes, all these eyes, which goes back to Argus. And so the constellations and the planets uh, going, back, especially the northern constellations going back, but also this tradition was carried on later by the Hermeticists and the Alchemists, who were the guys such as Roma, um, Kirscher, Riccioli, uh, Huygens, Mersan, all, all, Kunraf, all these Herm Alchemists and Hermeticists were creating the sciences at the time. There was no standardized language, so they wrote in different ways, encoded it in different ways. And it uh, sort of brings us back to the pendulum and the speed of light and Oli Roma, who used Io and Jupiter to calculate the speed of light with nothing more than a telescope and a pendulum. And that this, these symbols again have just been embedded so rich. This uh, stuff, unfortunately, it gets it's been turned into some. You know, th this is being excluded, and now people are ba basically inventing, putting it whatever they want on there. But yeah, so this is what these people were doing. The legacy still lives with us today. They drew their knowledge from uh, ancient sources as well, and yeah, it's time and measurement weight defines our our society. And it's embedded in these old traditions and artwork. So 
speed of light, there you go.